Hello friends, I welcome you once again to the lecture series initiated by Just Law Academia which has been powered by Abhimanyu IES. See we have initiated here to discuss the previous year's questions paper. Herein we are discussing the paper of 2018 Haryana Judiciary. Already three topics, three chapters, three subjects have been covered by our worthy scholar Mr. Pritam Sharma that is on <coughs> constitution and uh, sale of goods and contract, the commercial law he have touched. Today I am going to discuss the uh, questions which emerged uh, uh, in the paper of CRPC. See it is a subject uh, which is uh, I mean very important and carries lot of uh, weightage like you know as far as exam is concerned. About 15 to 20 questions you will find of CRPC, same is of CPC and the other course subjects. Means if you, you consider I evidence, IPC, CRPC, CPC and the constitution, you will find about 70 to 80 questions of these subjects only. So, these subjects are very, very important for examination point of view. I will not pinpoint here as to which is the provision which is important because subjects are quite exhaustive, you need to I mean go through each and every provisions. So, let us see the questions without wasting any more time like you know. The first questions as you can see on the screen, I would request all the viewers note to uh, I mean uh, write down, just hear me patiently because you will find the uh, link of the PDF file which you can download after the lectures fine. So, so you, you can download it, but here you, you have to listen patiently so that you can understand and absorb the concept fully and you can actually come to know about the probable questions which could be asked in the area. I mean which is pertaining to the questions. So, I think we are going to cover in the coming discussions uh, almost uh, 15 to 20 concepts. So, regarding these concepts if any question is asked by the examiner to you, you will be fully confident to answer if you have heard it patiently. So, let us start with the first question. It is like A is arrested by a police and accused of murder of B during investigations. A voluntarily agrees to undergo narco analysis and therein he confesses to have murdered B. See my dear friends, this narco analysis test has been an area of debate few years back, not only among the fraternity, but also with the common mass masses and the uh, I mean the students of law and the, even the judiciary too. Why so? See article 20 clause 3 provides the protection or the privilege that one is not compelled to be witnessed against himself. An accused cannot be compelled to be witnessed against himself. Now, once this scientific technique is adopted by the investigation agency or exercised upon the accused in order to extract the truth, truth, then this is widely condemned. Because whatever utterance is being made by the accused that is not coming voluntarily, rather something, some chemical uh, I mean substance is infused in his body which is compelling him to depose certain things which he never intended to do had he been normal. So, please understand. So, the, the testimony which is not coming voluntarily or the force is being exercised on the pretext of the scientific te uh, technique that is highly condemnable and that is what has been held in the landmark judgment of uh, Selvi versus state of Karnataka which I have provided here. In the Selvi versus state of Karnataka Supreme Court rejected this post utility reliability and the validity of the narco and license other tests are method 61 criminal investigation it violated individual's right to privacy and amounted to cruel inhuman and degrading treatment. Because once you are being compelled then your privacy is being intruded by the investigation. Fine. So, this landmark judgment to th on this point which says that if it is unvoluntarily statement or you are being compelled then it will not be admissible and hit by article 23 as well as section 161 subsection 2 of the CRPC as well which says that you are not supposed to answer anything which will expose you or which will tend to expose you to any forfeiture or penalty. So, for example, <coughs> ek accused hai. Uske against me witness aata hai aur bolta hai ki sir I have seen committing I mean uh, murder I mean I have seen him committing murder of A fine. Now suppose the murder took place in the midnight hours and he is a professional thief the witness is a professional thief. Now he cannot be asked by the police that is it true that you were there to commit theft 
Now, in case he answers yes, then he will be putting himself into a peril and he could be implicated in a case of theft. Fine. So, these questions he cannot be compelled. So, he is not supposed to answer it. This protection and privilege has been provided to him under 20 clause 3 of constitution and 161 section 2. So, these sec two sections plus two judgments which you have to note down. State of Bombay versus Kartikalu very important which you have to go through and second is Nandini Satapati versus P L Dhani and third one is Selvi versus State of Maharashtra. So, my dear friend this is the whole concept. One more question was asked with regard to the narco as to what is the name of the chemical which is being used. So, you can write down the name of the chemical as well. The question was the narco analysis technique involves the intravenous administration of which chemical? So, that is sodium pentothal. So, this is the chemical which is actually infused which prompted somebody like to utter something which he never intended to. So, I hope this concept is clear to you now. So, one cannot be compelled to be witness. This privilege is there. 161 that you are not supposed to answer that which will put you into the uh, uh, trouble of uh, facing some kind of uh, forfeiture fine or penalty fine so these protections are available to you and this has been this practice has been considered to be a uh, uh, inhuman and uh, barbaric and cruel one so this is not permissible and the evidence under this test will not be admissible but one exception is there if somebody wants to go undergo himself for this test then but obviously that would be admissible and this is what the question is now let's come to the question back a is arrested by police and accused of murder of b during investigation a voluntarily agreed to undergo narco analysis voluntarily agrees to undergo narco analysis and then therein he confesses to have murder so he undergoes voluntarily and confess confession now section 24 to 30 of indian evidence act provides incorporates provision for the confession you can see my detailed video on that 24 say that if the conf confession is obtained by any kind of threat promise or inducement that is inadmissible 25 say if it is made to the police then it is inadmissible 26 say then it has been made while in a police custody then it is admissible but if it is in the presence of the judicial magistrate then it is okay then it is admissible but section 27 say that in pursuance of the confession so made if certain recoveries are made that part of recovery to the extent of that recovery it would be admissible so here my dear friends the answer is voluntarily confessions by the accused himself voluntarily he undergoes for the narco analysis the answer is only that much of a statement can be used as leads to discovery of a fact as per section 27 of indian evidence act so this is the answer for this questions now let's proceed further now in criminal trial the accused has to establish his plea for the mitigating or justification of an offense see bit confusion has been created here accused has to establish his plea for the mitigation or justification now understand it. It is the prosecution who is to prove its case beyond the reasonable doubt. But is it applicable to accused as well? The answer is big no here. Now the accused has to establish what? Substantially beyond reasonable doubt, prima facie, none of these. So you can say that substantially he has to. Now the in in the civil cases, the methodology or the standard of proof which is required to prove certain fact is that is that is preponderance of probabilities mean means balance of probabilities what does it mean like you need to understand is preponderance of probability the evidence must establish a significance greater than 50 percent of the probability now if the accused is able to create a dent in the case of the prosecution even one percent above 50 percent then he will be acquitted fine so the accused the parameter for his the same as it is in the civil cases the preponderance of probability but in case of prosecution he need to prove proof beyond reasonable doubt means more than 100 percent of the degree of standard of proof if it is there then only the prosecution will win over the case otherwise the accused will be given the benefit of doubt and he will be acquitted fine now let's proceed to the next question Which one of the following statement is not correct? Where a court is not competent to frame charges in an offence, it shall not be competent to permit. See, this question is with regard to the withdrawal of the prosecution. Section 321, you need to refer for it. Under what circumstances the 
the the the withdrawal would be permissible or under what circumstances it will not be so here four uh, 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 things have been provided where a court is not competent to frame charges in offense it shall not be competent to permit here the court if has not framed the charges shall not be competent this is correct the public prosecutor is bound to receive instructions from the government and such instructions would not amount to an extraneous consequence this yes if the public prosecutor can seek instructions from the government and order granting permission to withdraw the prosecution solely on the ground that where about the case of us not now will is permissible no here it is not permissible now merely on the ground that accuse is identity has not been established or he has not been traced out or he has not been booked or he has not been brought before the court of law fine the prosecution merely on this ground cannot be allowed to withdraw the prosecution so the answer for this is i mean the third one fine the third one is the answer uh, section 321 you need to go through let's proceed further next question is the warrant of arrest is command and should be it must be in writing must be signed and sealed by the magistrate address to the police officer all are correct so the answer is fourth all above section 70 it is signed and sealed by the magistrate right i mean directions is given to the concerned police officer to make the arrest so you can go through section 70 for this question then comes the a person can be arrested without warrant fine we need to discuss thoroughly you can see my video on this like you know it's an, uh, the link will be provided to you when can the arrest be made without warrant see deprivation of personal liberty by a legal authority that is what we mean by the arrest now section 41 lays down certain circumstances wherein the police can make arrest without warrant so what are those circumstances as good as just 51 uh, as a preventive measure the arrest could be made for turning correct name and address section 42 says that if you are not a con- uh, i mean revealing the identity of the concerned uh, uh, police officer then he can make your arrest first carrying attendance obviously the main i mean the you can say the essential thing like to make arrest is to secure the presence of the accused during trial so that he could face it he could i mean defend himself and he could uh, ready to i mean accept the verdict of the court or the punishment of the sentence which is being awarded to him fine so this is the main purpose section 41 of the crpc i mean this this uh, provides the circumstances wherein it could be made if the uh, offense is um, cognizable in nature i mean quite heinous and uh, uh, the person is po or the he has been found uh, uh in possession of implement of house breaking or is a deserter i mean as good as 9 10 i mean the points have been covered under section 41 wherein he could be arrested without warrant yes the on uh, on account of ge- uh, not giving the name and correct identity he could be under section 42 he could be arrested and 43 he could be arrested by the magistrate if in his presence he has committed certain crime how the arrest is to be made section 46 makes it very clear fine so confining and touching the body of the person fine to the custody or unless he himself says that uh, yes uh, that i surrender myself then this is the mode which has been provided but arrest the word arrest has been not been defined but it simply means the deprivation of the person's liberty by the legal authority right so let's next proceed with the next question under section 173 of the crpc as amended in 2000 the investigation into the offense of rape shall be completed within a span of the answer is 2 months ठीक है वाई सो बिकॉज द कंडीशन इज वेरी अलार्मिंग इन इंडिया इन ऑर्डर टू सी द आई मीन यू कैन से दैट द क्रूशल थिंग्स यू नो विच आर हैपनिंग विद रिगार्ड टू द सेक्सुअल असॉल्ट केसेज इन इंडिया स्पेशली आफ्टर द निर्बे एपिसोड सी लॉट ऑफ चेंजेस हैव बीन मेड इन दिस एरिया नॉट ओनली इन सी आर पी सी बट आल्सो इन द आई पी सी fine and uh, the pokso i mean the, the one example the independent act in order to protect the interest of the children which was i mean uh, crafted by the law makers and in 2012 it was implemented and a lot of cases we see like on a daily basis like you know it's a very very you can say the uh, so did inc- incident and uh, quite an alarming one so in order to curb this manish so this has been uh done that you know the in, uh, investigation should be done in a not only in a fair but also in a swift way so therefore it has been provided under section 173 that investigation for such like offenses especially in the case of uh, uh rape or the i mean the sexual assaults and against the women so it should be conducted within a span of 2 months 
let's see the next question as per the provision of the crpc amended in 2005 shorty has to declare the number of accused for whom he is shorty under section 441a is the answer for this this was in, incorporated in 2005 just in order to uh, in order to enable the court to monitor that one should not uh, be a habitual in this field so that in case the main accused does not turn up he could not the shorty could not be i mean uh, shorty could not be subjected to fine for future penalty or subjected to punishment like you know because it would be very difficult for court to monitor in how many cases he has stood surety fine so he should not be so just in order to i mean uh, discourage the practice and uh, protect the uh, functioning of the court not to be uh, i mean subject so sub subjugated etc this provisions has been incorporated next question is the maximum number of offences of the same kind that can be tried together is answer is three where it is into one nine जो under of charge की ये बात करता है इसमें एक इंसान जिसने same kind का offence एक साल में up to three offence अगर commit किया है तो उसका trial जो है वो single trial two one nine is I mean providing it जो under of charge otherwise there has to be distinct charge for every offence and it should be tried separately that is the general provision but two one nine is an exception of it which says that of same kind of offences same kind of offences mean the offences which carries the same quantum of punishment those could be clubbed together. maximum of 3 in a last 12 months next section 167 of the crpc provides that the nature of custody can be altered from judicial custody to police custody and vice versa the alteration can be done during the period of first the remand maximum which could be awarded granted by the magistrate is of 15 days either of the police custody or the judicial custody depends upon the case to case it could be interchanged it could be interchanged ah uh, CBI versus Anupam J Kulkarni is the landmark case on this, which you go, which you need to go through to understand the whole concept of arrest, police custody, judicial custody, detention, and everything like you know, it would be covered in this case. You need to go through that. And moreover, see, fifty section fifty seven, which we have to read, which is one sixty seven. Now fifty seven say, if arrested without warrant. Investigation must be completed within two twenty-four hours. This is the mandate of Section fifty-seven. But if this could not be done, then one sixty-seven say that he could be uh, he could his 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 uh, detention could be authorized by the magistrate. Fine. So up to fifteen days maximum. It could be police or judicial interchangeably. Fine. And three more provisions. Two more provisions which you have to remember uh, with regard to the remand. That is. 209 b which talks uh, about the at a committal stage and 309 subsection 2 which talks after the cognizance one can be sent well uh, here the one can be sent to the judicial custody only so three provision 167 1209 b and 3092 which you have to remember with regard to it yes one more thing that whether executive magistrate can i um, i mean uh, order the remand detention Yes, the answer is yes. One sixty-seven two A. You need to go through the executive magistrate in the absence of the judicial magistrate can also uh, remand. And then next questions we see. Chapter twenty-one A of CRPC dealing with the plea bargaining. My dear friends, you need to understand this concept. Although this is hardly used in our court in India because it has not been. so popular because here nobody is going to admit the guilt quite soon once the charges are framed the opportunity is given to the accused to plead guilty it usually it has been seen that he hardly pleads guilty but in cases he pleads guilty and on account of the fact that he would be given concession in the punishment this is pre trial negotiation between the accused and the prosecution plea bargaining is the pre trial negotiation between the accused and the prosecution now accused here agrees to plead guilty in exchange for certain concession by the prosecution that he will be given certain concession fine now it does not happen in every case now it happens only in a cases which only a cases which are punishable up to 7 years of imprisonment one the cases which are not going to affect the socio and economic condition For example, cases of serious nature, such as the post-co, post-co, sexual assault, etc. I mean, these kind of cases will not be, I mean, covered under the plea bargaining. Fine. 
and offences against the woman and the child below 14 years. These are not covered under the plea bargaining. So, so this is, I mean, for the purpose, object of this is only the expedite disposal of the criminal cases. It was, uh, I mean, incorporated on the recommendation of the uh, Malimut committee. This question could be asked as to on whose recommendation this was incorporated. Fine. So it was a 2005 amendment, and provisions are from 265A to 265L. Fine. <coughs> Next. As per the provision of CRPC, shorty can be sentenced to civil imprisonment in default of payment of penalty under the shorty bond for maximum period of six months. So the answer is two. Refer to section 446, provided that where such penalty is not paid and cannot be recovered in the manner aforesaid, the person so bound as surety shall be liable by the order of the court ordering the recovery of the penalty to imprisonment in civil jail for a term which may extend to six months. Now the second questions from the uh, bond and sureties chapter like you know we have been discussing here. So each and every chapter from pre point of view is important you cannot ignore and you cannot go I mean only the important area or uh, I mean the, the, the area which you consider that you know the widely discussed or the significant each and every provision is important here as far as pre is concerned. So 446 is the answer 6 months next. As per the provision of section 437 of CRPC, you cannot cancel the bail. See, cancellation of bail, if it has been granted by the session court or the high court under section 439, then only 439 to cancellations could be moved before the session court or the high court. But as far as the magistrate is concerned, if he has granted the bail under section 437, 437.5 is the provision which actually empowered him to cancel the bail. Now, as far as cancellation is concerned, two, three things like, you know, which you have to remember if somebody is making, uh, I mean, mi misusing the, I mean, f uh, the, the liberty granted by the court, threatening the witnesses or, uh, I mean, uh, tampering with the evidence or if he has obtained the bail by concealing some material fact from the co court or, uh, I mean, misled the court. I mean, these are the few conditions like, you know, on the basis of which the cancellations can take place. The parameter, although cancellations are of same in, in 437 and 439, but still the, the magistrate, since the question is that magistrate is competent, the, as the president of the CRPC, the jurisdiction will cancel the bail west with the magistrate. Competent to try, magistrate where the magistrate has not ordered the release on bail, magistrate only where the magistrate has ordered release on bail. And the answer is magistrate only where the magistrate has ordered the lease on bail, this is the answer, fine, because 437.5, he is competent when he has granted the bail. So, let us see the next question. As per the provision of section 315 of CRPC, can accused be compelled to be give his own witness, cannot be a witness, can be called as a witness only on his own request and writing. See, my dear friends, <coughs> the principle of fair trial is says that he, the, the accused should be given a fair and free opportunity to defend himself, either by way of the witnesses or by, I mean, producing his own evidence or he could. Now, here the question comes, the accused cannot be compelled to be a witness against himself. But what if he says that I wish to be a witness, I want to depose something, then on his request in writing, court would permit him under section 315 to be a witness in the case. So, 315 is the premise. If he gives in writing, then only the court would permit him to be a witness against himself. So, 315 is the provision wherein the accused can be witness in his own case if he makes a request in writing. Next question. As per the provision of CRPC, offences can be compounded under section 325 by the legal guardian of a person. See, if the aggrieved party is a minor or the victim is a minor, with whom the offence is to become the complainant is a minor, then obviously the legal guardian. So, saying that under the age of 18 years, who is an idiot, who is a lunatic, in all the cases, the legal guardian is there. So, the compounding can take place with regard to the offences which are compoundable in nature with the legal guardian of the such persons who is not capable legally like you know because of minority idiocy or because of the I mean the is a lunatic, lunatic fine. So, in such cases like legal guardian will be competent to enter into a compromise. Rehabilitation scheme for victim compensation is prepared. See a lot of work is been taking place now on victimology, criminology and victimology because hue and cry were being made that victim is the one like who is not being heard even at the stage of the bail when it is to be considered by the court 
or when the trial is to take place fine so now a lot of evolvement and development in this field is taking place 357a is the provision which was incorporated only for the purpose that he should be equally compensated and he should be given a free opportunity to rehabilitate himself in the main strip especially in the case of acid attack in case of the sexual offenses and the crime t- with the with the women and a lot of a lot of i mean evolvement over a passage of time has taken place so here in the what does court do court refers the case to the concerned district legal service authority which assess the quantum of the compensation and then i mean uh, uh, request the court to accordingly grant it so here in the question is like like uh, under the scheme compensation is prepared on the recommendation of the shall decide the quantum compensation who will recommend and who will decide the quantum of compensation the answer is district legal service authority of the district where in the offense has taken place fine so 357a is the provision for this which you have to go through fine i think my dear friends like whatever questions emerged in the 2018 paper we have discussed all so with the next uh, topic of indian evidence act or the ipc we will be covering and likewise i hope you have learned and you have come to know i mean lot of concept uh anyhow thank you so much and see you in the next lecture